What's up? We spoken to this guy twice, but this is the first time we speak to him in person, in the flesh. Yeah, he might give you some advice for 2023. Who's this person? Ha! saying that we need to do something about our intro because every time a guest sits in the show right it's an awkward minute and 28 should, seconds should we start making them dance uh? no the moment the thing comes on it's like uh, one minute of just them dancing no, yeah but you need to <laughs> think of those who li- most of the, our listeners actually listen to us on Spotify like, so when they're dancing you yeah. have to narrate their dance oh okay yeah no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have back on the show. Very happy to have him. His time is precious. Yeah, his time is money. <laughs> time AKA, is always money. Time is always money. This, for this guy, time is money because we have Mr. Money TV, aka Peter. Let's go. Yo, what's up, everyone? Yeah. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank I, you for having me here, man. So, See, is today's episode going to be uh, how to make a million ringgit in a day or something like that? Probably, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, this is how this is how I cheat, lah. You know, um, you see, when you talk to <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Mister Buy TV, and ask him for financial advice, you must pay for a course. But if I reach out to him and say, "I want," can I interview you? <laughs> 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 he comes to the show and we ask for financial <laughs> advice. This is, the, this is the the top financial tip right now. If yeah. you want financial advice, don't go for advice. Just ask them to come to your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Jean's podcast, Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. How have you been, man? Uh, I think the last time we spoke was like a year ago. Mm, yeah, yeah. Not not really a year ago, uh, but I would say the podcast years a year ago, but yeah. time but on, to time on, again. Yeah, on your yeah. show, on your show, I was on your show for about like about maybe about three, three months, three, four months ago. That was mm. cool. Yeah, and, yeah. And then uh, you know, a lot of things has changed. We changed the prime minister. I'm so we changed, yeah. the, we changed the country. Yeah, we changed the country. I still remember I bump, bump into you in the um the Tamantun there, right? Yeah, yeah. we were uh, at the. Uh, yeah, oh, you at the the. So it's like much of hush hush, you know. So I went for Hanayo's uh, talk, you know. In, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I bumped into him. I bumped to him. I bumped a lot into of people him. were there. Huh? It was pretty. A lot of people lit, were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were just yeah. going. No, we were just going there casually, and then like, hey, something's happening here. Then we walk in. Hey, you here, so ah? Uh? <laughs> oh yeah, la, here la. <laughs> Casually. Yeah, casually. <laughs> then we like, oh, is that Hanayo? Oh yeah. Huh? Wow, what a coincidence, oh. huh? Hmm. I thought I thought what's happening in the park? Maybe concert or something. Ah, like that, right? So concert, just walk past, you know, and then walked in like that. I felt like a, I thought. Yeah, actually, I thought it was a stand-up comedy show because I saw Jason Leung also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it happens. Oh, Jason, are you doing a set here? Like, no la, no la. Then I saw Kwa Jun Han also. Yeah, so I thought it was a stand-up comedy show. That's why we were there. Oh, no wonder <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a circus or something. That's why I brought my kid the day. Oh yeah, normally. Uh, <laughs> no, I thought because he saw Jin there like a clown. Eh? That's why it's a circus. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, hey, you know, like uh, off the bat, right? The minute they announced a new prime minister, uh, the USD kind of weakened against. <laughs> The reg- I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> I'm, ha- I'm not sure whether you're happy okay, about that. That, that one, I, I really didn't expect it to be so fast, okay? Yeah, we know that. Because uh, previously in our show, many people are asking us, should they change their money into uh, USD, right? But for us, we were telling them that, uh, number one, USD already increased so much. Yeah. That, that it's, it's bound to go down again, really, yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Then we, we know that the reason why Malaysian ringgit is weakening is because of all these political uncertainties, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Then uh, there were already a lot of rumours saying that if, let's say, uh, another person takes over the government, then a lot of foreign investors will leave and therefore the ringgit will weaken further. But what we did not expect is at the moment the new prime minister was announced, immediately... Yeah, instant, ringgit right. strengthened. Yeah, like, wow. Not just the ringgit, even like the busa and uh, the the stock. The uh, that that one expected, cause but it's normal, right? During election uh, period, it's always like yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So, so that's why you can see like when it was uncertain that time, right? What what happened was um, uh, what we call it sin stock, right? Yeah, you see, Carlsberg and everything all went down, all plunged, <laughs> plunged like crazy, right? Yeah, everyone thought like, okay, gone, right? gone, right? gone are the days of Carlsberg, uh, no more. Uh, sorry, a brand mentioned. Okay, well, I got zero, <laughs> zero alcohol. Zero, uh. yeah. <laughs> so then after that, at the moment the new PM came came in, then mm, straight away went up again. So. Party like, yeah! Okay, <laughs> yo, man. Yeah, all drinking like, look, 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 look. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, that, that, and uh, that was, that was when a lot of people like, I, you know, I hate it when people start saying like, they they want to kind of like uh force what kind of like test the waters to see whether Malaysia is worth staying in or not, right? They, they look at the USD versus MYR uh, currency. They be like, oh, oh dollar, dollar, dollar. See Singapore currency, dollar, dollar. Then they move up. So do you think uh <clears throat> do you think we will ever see one USD equals three and a half 
uh, one USD <laughs> three and a half ringgit now. It got no, it happened before. It three was half, that, honestly, it's not that long ago where one ringgit was not just three and a half, was under three and a half. When I was studying in the states, it was just under three and a half. Oh really? Mm, mm, yeah, mm, it was yeah. really not that long ago. Yeah, the time, the time. I think what happened was that uh, uh, Tun M yeah yeah packed pack the ringgit against USD. For mm. quite a long period of time, right? Forgive so me, forgive me for asking yeah. this stupid question. But what is pegging in the ringgit against what with the USD? What, that, what does uh, that mean? So how it works is that when you actually hold a currency today, right? Yeah. Uh, what happened is that this particular currency is actually just an IOU note in a way from yeah. your government. Yeah. To put it in the most non-technical layman terms, right? So uh, when you hold a ten ringgit note, it means that government will have to give you ten ringgit in asset. Ah. Yeah, that's the same value, right? So yes. uh, depending on the government. Some government will say that uh, it is uh, this 10 ringgit must be 10 ringgit in value in terms of gold. So that's what we call backed by gold, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but generally today you're not backed by gold. So what they will say is that uh, it is backed by any form of uh, securities or any form of asset from the government that's 10, right? So uh, depending, on, um, depending on different government and stuff like that. So when, when what happened is that uh, during Tun M time, what he did is that, okay, for every one ringgit note, that you have, yep. okay, it's gonna pack against three, three something, yeah. So as long as you give me one ringgit, I'm gonna give you fix three something USD. So I fix the price as such. Yeah. So when they fix the price as such, right, the good side about it is there's no price fluctuation. Right. Yeah. So compared to on a normal days, let's say just like us, we buy a lot of stuff online, right? So we buy stuff in USD. Yeah. And then that day you'll be looking at the exchange rate, right? Yeah. yeah. Today is it more expensive yeah, or yeah. buy next month first, yeah. or like that, right? But in his case, during his time, is that he packed it against mm. straight away fixed price, so you don't have to think already. It's oh. that price. That's it. Yeah. But so is it if if I was again the USD is actually, I mean that's what they say like it's backed by gold, right? Uh no, you they changed it. Today USD is not backed by gold. Uh, during Richard Nixon's time, their president is backed uh, by bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, what? According to their <laughs> website, <laughs> it says uh, backed by equivalent amount in terms of a uh, treasury bonds and so on. Yeah. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, that's a whole entirely different story, right? But the thing is that um, what happened is that during Nixon's time, in order to f- okay. Don't quote quote unquote uh, to fund the Vietnam War. Yeah. Yeah. So they depacked it. Oh. Yeah. So they depacked it. So what happened is that now it is not backed by a particular asset value, but it's just I say. So when they say, right, when they say that it's being backed by my own government bond, yeah. what is it telling you uh, is that think about it, uh, the bond is high pre no, no. Yeah. I say one. So you have it's based so, on trust. Uh? Ah, so it's purely based on trust. Uh? Based on what I say. Uh? The hell? Wow. Uh, so that that is how it goes up. So but like generally the today, world currency mostly works that way. They yeah. say like today I feel like my value here is twenty, then the value is twenty D la. Uh, or then I say, okay, now I straight want to print more, then I just print more. Not as simple as that, but kinda like that. La. <laughs> there are certain market mechanisms to make it work that way. La. So here you have to understand the the history of the U- US currency. La how US currency end up dominating the world and uh, you need to learn about Bretton Woods agreement, those kind of like more intricate details. See, this is where I'm looking at him and just paying attention to this moustache. You know? <laughs> 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 He's like, I, was, I was like, wow, this guy quite clean shaven. Yeah. Bad, right? but only the chin part quite nice. <laughs> I wish I had a full beard. Now, yeah, doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, so like, uh, obviously when US were, okay, see, I don't really follow much on US stocks and, and, and I don't invest much in US stocks and stuff, but you know, I think recently I I, I discovered this guy called Jerome Powell, mm, mm. who was one guy who decides to come out and say a few things and then everything will just plunge or go oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. He, he he now says that, uh, they said that, okay, so current, so yeah, the world currency is obviously being uh, compared against USD. Or, or, I can't, what's the right word to say? US is the global currency, am I correct? The global reserve currency. The global reserve currency. So if the currency becomes more valuable, we are dead. That kind of thing, right? Uh, not exactly. It not has exactly. pros and cons. Pros and cons, uh. yeah. So like um, recently, uh, US inflation is very high. So in order to curb inflation, he has to raise interest rates. Because when interest rates were low, too many people were borrowing money from the banks and then spending yep. crazily. Yeah. Yep. That's why all the prices all go up. Yeah. So now to counter that, they erase interest rates so people die. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah. And because that happened, uh, because the global whatever currency thing is, that's why our currency is dropping. Wait, so yes. this happened in the States. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is, is that correct to assume that because 
uh, they're raising their interest rates and people find having USD is more valuable. That's why they are buying more USD and all the other currencies are dying. That's right. That's right. So uh, you have to think about it this way, right? The whole world system is all about supply and demand, right? Yeah. Yeah, we all know that supply and demand. So uh, what happened is that when people put their money, they just want to look for the best return possible. Mm. Right? And naturally, the safe haven is is the safest form of investment is you invest in a government in a sense, right? Government only money show you pay you back, right? Yeah. It's just a matter of time, right? Yeah. Mm. But the point is, they show pay you back. So uh, what happens is that for most investors, when they keep their money in currency, if let's say suddenly, number one, USD is already the strong strongest currency in the world, yeah. in a way, right? And uh, a lot of world trades are done in USD. Yep. So naturally, when US in increase its interest rate, so what will happen is that, let's say, assuming it's 4%, right? Mm -hmm. So, so imagine the FD is four percent. Uh, so imagine, uh, right? Uh -huh. So, would you prefer to put your money in Malaysian ringgit, which is getting you four percent, versus putting in USD giving you four percent? Malaysia, because aku Malaysia, aku <laughs> anak Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> aku anak Malaysia Demi yeah. Pertiwi no, Chinese say uh, lying never blink <laughs> <the eye. laughs> well, Yeah of course of course, I'll put it into to USD yeah. Because the returns is bigger ma. Yeah and also it's a stronger currency right yeah. In yeah, sense. Yeah. So people will actually withdraw their, their money Change it into USD Ooh. Yeah, Leading the, the demand for USD become stronger Therefore pushing the price up Right Yeah so, so that's how it works So yeah I've been checking Okay so the reason why I've been kind of Googling all this stuff on YouTube I was watching lots of Mr. Money TV videos. It's because a lot of people are, are talking about this uh, a recession that's actually going to be coming next year. Everybody is forecasting yeah. a recession. Mm. So until today, I don't think I kind of... Okay, I would like to say that I read enough to kind of understand what the uh, uh, recession is on the surface. But let me ask you, why does a recession happen? What leads to a recession? So recession generally happens... Uh, I mean, the tech, textbook answer is actually uh, when GDP go da goes down by two or three consecutive quarter, I can't remember, somewhere mm -hmm. along that line. Uh, but those are all textbook definition. But the point is that um, in an economy, we need we need people to spend money. Yep. Yeah. yeah. When people spend money, business only got revenue, then mm -hmm. only you can pay the tax, that's how it goes, right? Yeah, and then tax them more money, then the, the, then the money continue flowing. It's a cycle. Okay. It's a cycle, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, but what happened is that in a recession happens when people are not spending money. Right. When people don't spend money, businesses don't do well, therefore less tax, less GDP, stuff like that. Then it's considered a recession. Okay. So uh, when that stops, then naturally it trickles into a negative cycle again. Mm -hmm. Where, For example, if let's say I'm a business, um, this year the business is not so good. So what I'll do is that I'm going to fire some stuff, right? I'm going to lay off yeah. some stuff. And again, it leads to less people. So the mama store down there have less customer going there because they got no money. Then yeah. lead to them also firing their stuff. Then more people, no job. Then <laughs> yeah. nearby restaurant, less business again. Then it just keeps going on. Yeah, until something happens. Why do people, okay. So you see, right? Like uh, a lot of companies have announced worldwide to, that they're laying off like 20%, 30% of their staff. Let's just put it this way. Uh, Facebook. Facebook announced they were going to lay off 30% of their staff. But we, know, we, know, we know that Facebook is the biggest social yep. media platform in the whole wide world. Yep. A lot of brands spend billions of advertising revenue on Facebook. Why would you think Facebook would lay off 30% of their staff if, like, you know, thinking that they won't... Are they actually losing money? Because I don't believe they're losing money. I believe that they're just making less. Uh, they, they actually... So Facebook is in a very, very interesting position. I think the first thing we have to understand when it comes to laying off stuff, right? Uh, yep. In the US data, right? Although there's like a lot of company laying off stuff, but actually the most, the most, uh, what do you call it? The most severe part of it happening is actually in the tech industry. Uh -huh. Because you have to remember that during the COVID time, tech industry boomed. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, they yeah, boomed. yeah, yeah. And what happens is that they expand. And they expand very fast. Yeah. As usual, like invest the money, you know, stuff like that. So throw in a lot of money, higher, 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 higher. And then suddenly when the market go down, right? Now they have to tighten their belt. Then very fast, they started firing. So what happened, quote unquote again, from what I've read so far, uh, was that it's actually most severe in the tech industry, but other industries is not that affected. Okay. Which makes sense because during COVID time, they kind of already slow down already, right? Yeah. So like, so how like how hiring. bad more can yeah. they go? How bad more can it go, right? But the tech industry were the ones who actually had uh, a lot of hiring and they had to subsequently fire the people. They burst their bubble. Off. Yeah, they burst yeah. their bubble, right? Uh -huh. uh, and having said that, if talk about Facebook specific, uh, Facebook as a company, as a stock, right? 
they actually have a very in, they are actually in a very interesting place because he is he is betting on something very big. Ah. You know they are they are all in into meta now, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now. yeah. So now it's literally meta, right? And his his idea is that eventually, you know, this is gonna be the biggest thing in the world. Everybody will um, stay home and not go out. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is right now, we are not seeing that yet, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and he's spending so much of money. Apparently, ah. if I'm not wrong, they used to have a lot of cash. Almost ninety yep. percent is being spent off already. Wow! Just to build the whole metaverse. Yes. And and, everything. and and this is what he did, huh? When the revenue went down, yeah. when he lose so much of money, then analysts were calling, investor were calling, people were asking like, "Hey, so what are you gonna do the next quarter? Are you gonna like hold hold back horses and what are you gonna do?" Mm. Then this is what he did. No, we are gonna continue. Nah, it's gonna be worse next year. <laughs> 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 yeah, I believe in the vision, so it's like, wow. Oh, got as a person I said got guts lah, right? Yeah, Power yeah. Yeah. So so I think he has already put himself in this position, right? Where it is either he's gonna go big or go home, uh, really. Oh wow. He's really yeah. wow. he's really putting all his eggs in this basket. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean you can see even with the recent like uh, Instagram going down. I mean that Yeah, yeah Instagram yeah, yeah, going yeah. down, you know. Yeah. It, it like, was down for like about a day, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what the cash cow day. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So people are wondering like do you care so much about Meta that you don't even care about your existing business at this point? Yeah. So that has already kind of, in an investment perspective, it kind of stir up the community a lot. So um, previously, they were like, like when you look at the valuation wise, um, Meta was considered, you know, well, pretty attractive in terms of valuation. Yep. Okay. However, because of these moves, it makes you wonder, do you really want to put all your eggs into this guy? Because if he don't make it, he don't make gone it, no. Nah, but if you make it, you're gonna call him the legend, the genius. Yeah. yeah. So are you gonna make such a risky bet? And in this kind of crazy volatile times, right? Mm. So that begs the other question, yeah. Okay. Okay. So right. now, now that okay, going back to recession a little bit, uh, So do you think a recession is coming next year? In your opinion, I think do you feel it coming. I think yes. Yeah. yeah. During wait during a recession, right? Do don't pr- uh don't don't prices also come down? People throw prices because they did a clear stock, that kind of thing. Is that some? Is it a part and parcel of a recession too? Um, I don't think it's gonna come to the point of. Uh, I was just complaining to myself the other day, right? I said mm-hmm. that like, okay, like yeah, right now we are gonna say you know commodity prices and go down anything, right? Yeah. You walk out the street, makan your pan mi. Yeah. Did the price went down? No. No. Oh right? yeah, I no. did. Yeah. So I. I but don't Malaysia is like that one where price always go up, never come down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that one. No, it's, no, it's true though. It's true. Like yeah. what, what, what? But in this instance, what can you do to curb a recession? Is like we, if everyone's saying it, everyone knows it's coming. It's like we're just watching the tsunami coming towards us, and we just yeah, yeah we just look yeah. at it. Oh yeah, come on, come on, yeah. quite tall, well, yeah. Oh, oh, so nice, ah. Oh. Oh. You know, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I are know there things that can be done to kind of like you know get in the car, run away from tsunami or something. Um, actually, you can't because this is a systematic thing. Yeah. yeah. What happened is that you need the overall everyone to agree and do something about it, right? right. So, um, I mean, no business is gonna suddenly just say like, "Oh, okay, the the price of chicken has gone down, so let Let's me go just with, uh, yeah reduce the price by one ringgit." Yeah. And, nah. nah. Pet- <laughs> petrol maybe, but you know, <coughs> but pet- petrol is controlled, ma. Yeah, yeah. Petrol yeah, is controlled. Yeah. Is a so is a controlled substance. Non control item. I I have strong doubts. And number two is that uh. I think recession is coming, but I don't think it's gonna hit us like some big wildfire kind of thing. Oh, I really? think it's just gonna be like we are just gonna slowly ease into it because in a way we are already. I think yeah. all of us are doing business here. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see your customers all trying to stinge on their wallet a little bit more these days. But right? isn't it yeah. all clients though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So so it's like <laughs> but I'm it's sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Any clients, <laughs> any clients? <laughs> Let me rephrase. Yeah. Any clients listening to this podcast is just for, it's a joke, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. Nah, you, Jin, guys, you guys is not referring to his own clients. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. clients are all yeah. very generous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys <laughs> gave you, <laughs> yeah, you guys gave us good budgets. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we don't know how to uh, <clears throat> we don't know how to control our spending. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I okay, uh, but, but actually to be I'll be very honest about this. Uh, if you say that we are currently in some sort of a recession and people are cutting spending. Uh, in my opinion, in the industry that I'm in right now, not really. So, so the thing is this, right? This is what what I'm trying to say, right? Is that you may not feel it, okay? Yeah. Uh, but what happened right now is that um, I think generally because everyone is scared, yeah. So everyone is just preparing for it. Ah. Uh. So there is this like, yeah, I may have the money, but 
let's prepare for it. Right. So unless you can give me a very strong reason, like for your case, right? Uh, because your business is in marketing. It's, it's the yes. It's a very important component. So yes, yes. There's no reason for them not to spend on it because yeah. if they don't spend on it, it's not going to grow their business as well. Yeah. They're just going to be forgotten after yes. the recession. Yeah, but I guess what happens is stinging comes is when like... Um, Maybe toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> last time, uh, unlimited. Now I give you one roll. Uh. Yeah, last time I can give you ultra soft. Now water. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that kind of, uh, you know, this kind of stinging, I think is gonna happen here and there. Yeah. When, when I was young, uh, radio used to have all these uh, campaigns to curb inflation. They call it austerity drive. Change your lifestyle. Change your mm. lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. A recession is here. A recession is here. But <clears throat> who are the ones who are actually... Okay, I always believed in me, in in my own, own opinion, marketing can never stop during a recession because if yes. you stop, yeah, then when the time is right, uh, when you think the recession is over, the ones who continued advertising throughout the recession are gonna come out stronger. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. the recall, the recall is there, and people forget very easily. So uh, I always think that the advertising industry always has to continue spending, but our cost cuts cut they cut budgets up. But like, let's not talk about organizations and businesses who are the most affected when it comes to a recession. Low skill. Employees, no skill, low skill, low skill employee. Because think about it, right? Like, um, whoever runs a business today, if let's say you're running a restaurant, you you won't be laying off your chef, yes, because they're important yeah. enough. Yeah. But what you notice now is that you go into a restaurant, you realize that there are less waiters. Yeah. You realize mm. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah last yeah. time you said four, or five people, right? now yeah, yeah, less. Yeah. yeah. So the same thing in every single company is is the same. They may reduce in terms of uh, janitors. They may reduce in terms of admin staff. Um, mm. So I think the most vulnerable groups are the B forty groups. Yes, yeah, those who do not possess a skill set that is indispensable. This has been <coughs> this has been discussed in multiple podcasts that you scroll through on your Instagram reels. Everybody keeps talking about skill up, skill up, level up, level up in yep. terms of skill set. Um, even if you get retrenched, there was this one guy who said he was retrenched. He's an engineer, but he took up video editing. Uh, now he mm. works uh, in Bali remotely, editing videos from around the world, and he's yeah, he's he's fine. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But the, the thing is, he didn't go through a recession. Uh, he he just got laid off of his job, and and he said that a lot of people says that as long as you have a skill set, people want to pay for that they can't do because like I can edit video, you can okay. We all can edit videos here yeah. Let's let's talk about another skill set. Yeah. I can bullshit. Can you bullshit? Not? It's, it's <laughs> bullshit. It's, <laughs> Is bullshitting a skill set? <laughs> I would say yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if I can present something, is if that's a skill set, you can't do it. You'll pay me to go and present it for you. Yeah, so that's yeah. right. That's, that's right. right. Like if you can design, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Design yeah. a skill set. Yeah, In yeah. your opinion, what are the best skill sets to have during a recession? I think at this point right now, every recession is different. But I, I would say that during this time of, you know, I think digital skill sets are the most important. Mm. If you actually know how to do video editing, you know how to do uh, YouTube ad placements, that yep. kind of stuff. Um, yeah, as long as you're familiar in the digital side of the world, there is a huge need for these kind of skills. Right. Right. So, uh, and and that's why that's why you're doing very well. You're not affected, man. You don't feel recession at all, Jin. No, 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 no. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I feel it. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean... I, I, you're actually you're very right at one point. We always prepare. I, I remember Ryan like two years ago. I keep saying, guys, yeah. we might be going into a recession. Yeah. We might be going into recession and COVID came first. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, okay, do you think the COVID actually has an effect on this recession coming? Because like I say, when COVID, people get laid, laid off their jobs yeah. and like you explained, recession usually comes about when people stop spending. And yeah. we know during COVID times, a lot of people cut down yeah. on spending some ways or another because they, are, they have no jobs That's and everything. Right. So do you think that like in a way, COVID kind of affected and 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 kind of caused is that one component of the reasons why this this so called upcoming upcoming recession. Is I think happening. it hastens it. Yeah, because yeah. so maybe it's coming already. Like. I think it's coming already. It's just that mm. COVID made it came faster and harder. Uh, yeah, yeah. It sped up the process, la. Yeah. So how does one? How does okay? Let's not go to organizations, okay? Companies, um, I think they have their own game plan, and every company has a different game plan when it comes to recession. Some mm. lay off, some low spending, some this. How does one actually survive a recession? How okay? How long does a recession last? Usually about eighteen months to. Uh, I mean, it can be as as low as twelve months, but generally as low as twelve. <coughs> so that's a year. Yeah, that's a year. So until thirty six months. Oh Damn. crap. Years are basically. Uh, years are two to one, three years. Uh, one to three years. Yeah, then. one to three years somewhere around there. Oh wow! Yeah. Then every time I hear, every time I. Ah, I know why the first thing I I not keep saying first thing I need to do is economy, economy, economy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. How does one then? How does one? Wow, how does one survive a recession? 
Well, as long as you're indispensable, okay. you're in the industry that again is indispensable. Okay, le- okay, the skill set is for sure. Yeah. But what, what about those who are not? Sk- okay, mm. even with those skill set, I think what's more important is the fact that you actually manage your cash flow throughout that period of time. Yeah, people keep saying that you should have at least six months worth of savings. At the individual level, yeah, you should, but I know it's very hard, lah. Yeah, and and how? Yeah, <laughs> how can you have a six month? Okay, so you say six months. Even if that person has six months, what if he goes jobless for twelve months? That's crazy. Yep. So it's supposed to be in this way, in logical planning perspective. Uh, yeah, maybe you lose a job, you feel like a bummer, and then you're very sad, you're depressed. You know, I give you six months to be depressed, ah, but you better get out of it, man. Oh. If you don't get out of it after six months, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you just ran out of money, that's bro. True, that's yeah. true. That's <laughs> true. Like when you're in survival mode, right? It's no longer about finding that perfect job, the perfect that's right, day. Like that's right. If you can get something on your hand, you you gotta you, you, you right. gotta survive really like that's at that right. point. Oh, I, yeah. I agree with that. Last time yeah. when I went to college, I had no pocket money. All my friends can go party. I can't. I, I went to work at an event company. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you to put up cash to put up posters on a concert stage. I remember the first concert stage I put up posters for, uh, posters for was uh, Alan Tam and Hacken Lee. <laughs> I didn't know who they were. I only know Alan Tam. <laughs> yeah, Alan Tam, uh, you know. Then after I saw one guy like go grab a Dragon Ball hairstyle. Oh, who's that? Oh, go let Hacken Lee. Let her, my Hacken. Let Hacken. That's my first experience. It was cool though. It was cool though. I really, really like. And that was when I, I saw one guy holding a DSLR camera and I asked him, oh, wow, what camera is that? How much is it? Uh? Then he looked at me, I uh, can buy a car. I'm like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, what the hell? This fellow's so stupid. Spend money on the camera. <laughs> I might, if you give him the money, I'll buy a car. Why he buy, buy a camera? This is the guy who bought a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and, a and, car. and today I'm looking at uh, all <laughs> these, uh, <laughs> all these cinema lens. You skill know? set, skill set, skill <laughs> set. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. you see, like, during recession that time, when you come back again, the camera from 4BG go to 3BG, <laughs> go to 2BG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all just take phone and selfie and then I'll call Peter hey Peter you want to uh, you want to uh, buy a camera keep, 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 keep. <laughs> so okay when one let's say if somebody has uh, still a steady job during okay. recession okay I, I just want to cover all scenarios possible okay if a, what, if a person goes jobless uh, during a recession what would be the best advice to give to that person who just lost his job I think <clears throat> it's more important that you prepare before res- before you lose your job lah. like I mean in my opinion right we need to, I mean, I can definitely say that oh, once you lose a job, you go and look for whatever job you can find, you know, that kind of things, right? Yeah. But I think it's very important as a person, before you lose your job, you are already always looking out for new opportunities. Right? Yeah. Making it a practice, you know, to just, I'm not saying change job, but getting used to looking for opportunities. Right. So that by the time you happen to lose your job, you're not, you're not unfamiliar with that that the market out there. Yeah, like, the market yeah. out there. You're not unfamiliar with the emotion that drives you, you know? Mm. So you're familiar with it. So that's why I, I think it's, it sounds like an answer that I cannot really give an answer, right? Yes. Yeah. Is <clears throat> the fact that it's good to always have some side hustle going on somewhere. It's, it's, it's a Malaysian thing, right? The side hustle thing? No, I think it's, Worldwide, yeah, uh, worldwide. The yeah. gig is it? The, am I right to say it's called the gig economy? I think yeah. gig economy is a bit different, right? Gig economy is freelancer. More of like, yeah, in my mind, purely I freelance. Yeah. It's freelancer. You know, you don't have a steady paycheck. Every, yeah, but you rely on on gigs. Yeah. Uh, you rely on the job. Like every job could be your last job, that kind of thing. Yeah, but the gig economy can be a part time job. So then you yeah. get used to it first, so that by the time you, you know, really happen to be in that situation, then yeah, but. Yeah, I, I understand that. Like for people who lose their job, now you tell them that they're gonna be like, mm, like I didn't know that. <laughs> 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 so they're not really helping the guy, right? Yeah. Um, I I think sometimes when when a person really loses the job, then if you are not planned, you are not well prepared for it, then unfortunately you are in a very bad position. Yeah. But I think the first thing is actually just to get in the emotional right state first. Yeah. yeah. Because I think usually. I see a lot of people lose their job and getting into trouble and they, they couldn't sustain is because they they get into this self-pity mode. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. unfortunately, aside from that, can't really help. Then yeah, you need to like restructure your finance, you know. Yeah, maybe you got to leave off your credit card for a while, yeah. you know, that kind of things. Or borrow money, I, I don't believe in credit cards, to be honest. Yeah. I use it just to like, as a <coughs> convenience, not so much to rack up. Uh, conven- uh, I use it more as a convenience because I don't carry cash around uh, rather than to use it uh, because of the credit limit that you get. Mm. Like, I think credit cards are already a bad, bad thing. 
Yeah, right. It's, it's a. It's, it's, That's the reason why until now I don't have a credit. Yeah, card. bad and bad and good mm, thing lah. Yeah, really. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah, wow. I don't have a credit card. Yeah, I only have a credit card because I want to get the Air Miles. That's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then yeah, don't don't even have is the one tied to like my mom's card, on, uh. Yeah, just right, go KL, supplementary go KL, card. I'll go KIA just to go You should get a credit today. card, you know. I know that's the that's the <coughs> problem. So that's that, there was this whole thing. I was getting a house loan, mm-hmm. and because I don't have a credit card, it was yes, like, no loan. Then I go get a credit card like. You got no credit score now, so I can't give you a credit card. So I'm like, <laughs> you're too clean, <laughs> man. Yeah. Yes, it's got too I clean. Want, I need this to get. I need A to get B. Then when I want to get A, that time you say I need B to get A. So in the end, how how to get what to get? So I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. Yeah, I, so this weird. Credit industry is, it's annoying, honestly. Yeah, you ha- you have to. Yeah, you have to yeah. create a you know credit report for you have to like, owe people money to start yeah. borrowing money huh, even, as a, even as a company it's the same right like, yeah. that's why you see big corporations yeah they don't need the cash they still have a loan going on really yeah yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. still have a loan credit going score. on yeah so that they can have built a relationship with the banks that they work with so that in the event if anything happens they they can still borrow money right really? yeah, like, like, score yeah, then, yeah. Let, me, let me give an example right like yeah. during this period of time we are estimating next year may not be very good like yep. even for us we actually try to Get a loan first. Mm. Just secure a loan first. I I may not be what loan, business loan, house loan, or business loan. Yeah, we just got a business loan. Uh, until today, we haven't touched the money. It's sitting there. Yeah, but we got it. And the reason being is because very simple. I do not know what's gonna happen next. And when I calculated the interest, it's very clear cut. It amounts up to like a fresh grad salary. Mm-hmm. So I consider it in a way where I hire a fresh grad to give me security. that security. <laughs> I like that yeah. mindset. But wait, okay, how much is a percent? What's the interest you're rate for? You're buying insurance uh, on your... Yeah, on your, buying yeah, insurance. You're ca- buying, buying cash yeah. insurance. Uh. I'm just buying... Oh, I'm very intrigued insurance? in this. Ah. Okay, sorry, come again. Uh, how Actually, what? how much How much is the percentage? What's the interest rate uh, for a business loan? Okay, so between, between what to what? Usually, it, it can range from 4% all the way up to like uh, 10%, right? What the hell? 10%? Yeah, yeah all the way. But we were, we were very lucky. We got the, we got the COVID recovery fund. Free, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, because somehow the banks have a leftover and it was the last few days and no one was applying from them already. What? So they gave us a COVID recovery fund. So it was it was a very good deal. Comes with a six month moratorium, three point five percent effective rate of re- six months moratorium. Yeah, if, effective so return, if effective interest, you know, which is what well, damn good. So we like, oh, you know what? Let's just go for it. Yeah, it's really like hiring a fresh grad to give me security. Is there a limit for you? Is there a limit <laughs> of God, the loan? Cannot God apply la. too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a COVID recovery fund. So what yeah. if you took that 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 loan that you took from the bank, which you're gonna pay an interest? Is is the three point five interest rate fluctuating or fixed? No, fixed. Oh, fixed. Uh. Yeah, so it, ha- it's it's a good deal loan, you know. So what happens if you take that money and you put it into another fixed deposit elsewhere that's giving you four percent? You make money. Holy shit! You make the difference, uh. You make the five percent. Is that what you're uh. doing now? <laughs> uh, let's take this off the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could you could easily just like change it to US. Hey. Yeah, so so you see a lot of people have this idea, especially when running a business, right? Uh-huh. They always think that you don't take a loan unless you're in trouble. But yeah. you, you you forget one thing. You can't get a loan when you're in trouble, you know. That is true. That so is true. You when should, you have no, no guarantee, yeah, right? You should secure the loan before you're in trouble. Yeah. And definitely you calculate your interest. Like, if let's say the interest is too high, it doesn't make sense. Then what's the point? Yeah, For me, yeah. it's I calculated just nice. I know that this deal that I'm going to get is roughly about a fresh grad salary. Yeah. So for me, it's like, Okay, man. Sounds like a great deal for me. Like I only need to pay ten plus thousand yeah. to twenty thousand. You have to think of it like an insurance, really, lah. Yeah. You're, you're guaranteed you have to pay out this money, but then insurance, ah, that's what insurance yeah, is. So you, you pay out every month, anyways. I like it when I have yeah. Mr. Yeah. Money TV and my show. You learn new things every day. So, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Tomorrow is Jin going to all the bank in Taipan there. You so you, <laughs> hey, you got yeah. you got friend to intro at this COVID relief fund. <laughs> Nobody, sorry, but I mean, in the end, it's still a, it's still a risk, right? Like, like, no, okay, sorry, example, sorry. Do you, you pay do you pay the interest every every month or do you pay it at the end of your tenure? Uh, no, you 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 get a monthly installment where depending on the particular loan, uh, right? It, Some okay. loans will make you pay half. Like you know, certain percentage go yeah, into like, payment principal, structure, the la. payment structure yeah. and everything. Right. So like depending, the payment structure. Yeah, it's not one off and off kind of thing, la. Oh, but I loan you money and you pay me. Back. <laughs> 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 then you take the money you loan here and then you go put a fixed deposit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, la, I, I loan you that money <laughs> that I just loan. We transfer la. <laughs> Oh, I never thought about it. This okay. So yeah, I've always un, uh, under the impression that people take loans because they are in trouble. Mm. But I, the thing is, I grew up thinking of that. Like even yeah. like like I run a company right now. I wouldn't if I don't need to take a loan. I don't need to take a loan because right. don't evil. don't borrow money. Don't don't yeah. have to owe but, people money. But the thing is, it's different from the business world. People keep thinking that you know more debt means better. 
Yeah, because you have a relationship with the bank, and uh, I mean, think about it this way, right? For 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 a bigger corporation, the idea depending on them as well, lah, right? Some yeah. think of it as if I take a loan, it's about four percent. I can make about ten percent in return from my margin. Then why not? I'm using other oh, people's okay, money okay. to make money, right? Got it. But mm. definitely, banks are also not so. Uh, it's not gonna give you such an attractive rate, lah. Sometimes, right? Damn. So <coughs> okay. when it's not that an attractive rate, then you may not want to take it. But on the other hand, when you have a running loan with a bank, yeah, you are building an existing relationship with a bank. I see. And so it makes a lot more other things easier in mm. future as well. Yeah. So you have a track record, uh. Yeah, you build a track record. Yeah. Right. It's so kind of like the track record of you pay on time. Yeah. Sort of kind of right. like a credit card at a personal level like that. But yeah. obviously, I mean, I, I wouldn't um, encourage people to take personal loans on a personal level, uh, right? Because that's, isn't that? So no, then, then no. Yeah. No, right? Yeah, I, was, I, was works told, for I was being told personal loan is like one of the worst, the worst loans you can take because the high, interest right? rates are like just insanely high for a personal loan. Uh. Mm, yes. So what happens is that when you look at personal loan, right? You know how you look at all the advertisement, they tell you, yeah. 6% only, you know, like that. Actually, the one is flat rate, you know. Oh. So effective rate, uh, you times two, lah. Uh. So it's actually twelve percent. Wow. Yeah. So that's wow. effective rate. Oh wow. Yeah. So there's two ways of calculating loan, uh, and any form of interest, flat interest, like car, right? Uh, what they do is generally like if you borrow ten thousand from me, uh, I charge you a four percent. So it's four percent of ten thousand yep. times the number of years. Yep. So yeah. So it's gonna be four k times five years. So. 20, uh, 20,000, so yeah. 120,000 you owe me. Yeah. But if you actually look at house loan, uh, it yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It's actually reducing based on the balance, balance you owe them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's called effective, right? Oh. So when you look at flat rate, when they advertise, they tell you like, let's say car loans, um, nowadays it's got variable rates also for car loan. Lah, but generally we're talking about flat rate ones. Uh, if they advertise, they tell you about 2% loan only. Actually it's 4%. Uh, oh. uh, close to 4%. Uh. Yeah, so don't, don't fall in the trap thinking that the low number is low. Uh, why okay then why do some people refinance their houses like uh okay some people take house loans do, is there such thing as people taking house loans as a fix as a fixed interest rate um yes but rare rare la. rare 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 because you see house loan banks are also smart right then they so how they see it is that they know opr is going to go up and come down yep. yeah if let's say my, oh my OPR, opr that that is being offered in the market is three percent but Last time I gave you a loan interest of two percent. Yeah. Now I'm losing money, you know. I'm losing one mm. percent because yeah. I've taken up more, right? And you're talking about thirty year term, you know. Yeah. Hey, how many times will you fluctuate day? Yep. I yep. also don't know. Takna want lock in now, so they usually offer variable rate. Right. Yeah. So certain institution will offer a fixed rate. Okay. Yeah. But when they offer a fixed rate, thirty years they are taking a huge risk. Yeah. Mm. And that's when they they you no know, different institution they'll offer other things to. M- you know, make up those number So la. the OPR, correct me if I'm wrong, is the one that you say is set by Bank Nagara, that one, is it? Yes. That's the one, uh, the yes. one that recently went up. Yeah, he called, okay. me, he called, yeah. he called me, he I called me, he called me. I was so pissed because I, I, yeah, first time house buyer, then I was like, I received a letter like, hey, why is Sunny yes. have to pay more? Then I called I call my brother, I called him and I asked my advice. Hey, I didn't allow to do that. I was getting so angry. I'm going to call my <laughs> banker. Why did Sunny, <laughs> I signed the thing, they said, give me this straight, you know, why did Sunny, yeah. oh, I was like, oh no, yeah, I can't do jack shit about it. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. man. Yeah, went up twice already. Some more, I'm so sad. Really. Oh yeah, yeah. It just went up Wait, another yeah, round. Yeah, that's how I'm like. Oh my, I just paid one. That's how the month. I just paid my my installment. I'm like, wow, went up again. <laughs> feel the pinch, right? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why the recession pinch is coming. Yeah, in feel the pinch, right? Every yeah. zero point two five, yeah. uh, increasing your 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 loan kind of increased by almost ten percent actually. Yeah, yeah. That's almost crazy. ten percent. Yeah, ah, that's yeah. yeah it's, it went it's, up about uh, since I got my house a year ago. It went out almost 500 ringgit. What? Yeah. 500 ringgit per month. Yeah. So I suppose that's about like- The difference between now and, and when I first mm. paid my very first my very first payment is 500 ringgit. Yeah. Oh, my, uh, yeah. 20% Correct. increase, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct, it went up twice right? since then. Yeah, about 20% increase. Uh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ah, now I'm getting scared. Like the girl, ah, Jin doing? don't feel it. Jin say, <laughs> small money, yo, small money. No, 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 no. I, I, I've seen it change and I'm like, oh man. I have, yeah. I, yeah. No, no, for the me, is, the more expensive your house, right, the bigger the change is going to be. Oh, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel the pain because I, I was exactly like Ryan. I was like, what the hell? Why, Why is this happening? Why is this? I'm okay, even. Yeah. <laughs> 
It was 3.5. Why not 3.8? Uh, I felt cheated. Like, yeah. why, why is this? Then they had to sit down and uh, it took, I remember they, they sat me down and took 45 minutes to tell me why, why I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in a nice way, I never read the fine print. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. No, it's for me, it's the moment where I find out I'm not the only one getting fucked over this. That everyone in the whole country <laughs> getting fucked like, I guess we all die together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, okay, is it a good time to buy, uh, to invest during a recession? If you got money, yes, ah. Uh. Really? Yeah, if you got money, yeah. But you you don't want to be too too aggressive. Okay. Yeah, don't, you don't want to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Uh. That's right. That's right. But but it's a good time. That's why you see every recession makes some people very rich. Really? Yeah. Especially people with money. Rich become richer than yeah, the rich poor. Yeah, rich becomes become poor. richer. Yeah, what is the fail safe so investments then for recession during a recession? Um, in the past, it used to be gold. Mm. Right, everyone would be like, you know, recession. Let's turn to gold. Let's okay. turn to bonds. You know, but these days is not exactly at like that anymore. You know, okay. yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah. NFT. So, but generally, <laughs> the rule still goes by recession time. Property is the oh, one yeah. that people put their money in. Property. Uh, no, is it because like you say, our people need money. They have to sell their property. If uh, I got the money to sustain the next couple of years, I can buy first, hold off, hold it off until the end of recession, and then boom, the prices start going up. Yeah. So how people see it is like that, right? Uh, if you invest in stocks or anything else, you can't hold it. It's not your thing. It's not yeah, your yeah, thing. yeah. Nothing yeah, is yeah. physical there. Mm. But invest in property. It's a property. Yeah, I know. You hold I it. Can, I can touch it. You go inside. Uh, see, see the crack here. Crack there. Yeah, tangible. I can take the soil. Smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet cannot flush. Yeah, whatever it is, you know, it's a property. It's it's not gonna go away. No one can take it away from me. That's how they see it, right? Yeah, but you gotta yeah. gotta service the low. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I say I, like, if you're rich, then you can but afford they are to rich hold la, up. So yeah, it never crossed my right? mind. Yeah. Probably. yeah, and usually like during this time, also there's a lot of good deals for property, especially sub sub. Sale unit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then people will just buy up whoever that's on a, on a, you know, need sell off their properties desperately. And mm-hmm. gold, on the other hand, is gold. You know, it's gold. Okay. It's, it's the value of gold is. Yeah, it's kind of like everyone knows gold. I, know? I I I watched this video somewhere, and they said that silver also is a very good investment for you to hold during this recession. And they yes. said that uh they are leaning more towards silver this time round rather than gold, because they see silver being a very uh important component in the years to come in the long term because uh the world's uh the world is going going towards greener energy greener pastures everything is all electric and all these components require silver so at one point people are not going to realize it but there's going to be a very high demand of silver and they will not be able to basically cope with it and therefore silver price will go up what's yeah. what's your thought on that um for me <clears throat> i am not uh that's, when, very, that's it, very speculative, right? Yeah, correct. Because it's a little bit too long term. Uh. Then I'll feel like, uh, really or not? Later, halfway through, got another new, new material. New material. Uh, new they say graphite can do it also. <laughs> then how? Then you buy palm oil. Yeah. You're ready. <laughs> 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 so, you buy the kernel class. Uh, no, but but like, then mm. when I listen to that, also, I'm like, yeah, it could be true. But then the thing also, you got to think, how long term is it going to be? You hold up the silver now, maybe that silver will appreciate, uh, but in 150 years, you... Yeah, you you you, have you, to say, you right? never know, but generally we can say that commodity does keep on par with uh, inflation. For, for those for those who are not very familiar with the word commodity, can you please explain the word commodity? Uh, commodity basically means raw material, okay. right? Like gold is a raw material. Uh, palm oil is a raw yeah. material. Energy, you know, like the barrel of oil, those are all commodities. So basically, the unique part about commodity, why it makes it really interesting, is you are not just buying into an asset as in you want to hold it, mm. but it is usually items that are needed in creating something else. The real world. Uh. Yeah, it's a real world business raw material. So as long as there's business, they will need to continuously yeah. buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so then there's a continuous demand. So unlike cryptocurrency, like right now, is that it's, no not a commodi- it's not a commodity, yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like the, the FIFA died down, and then everyone's like, it's like oh, what am like I going to use it for, now. right? What am I going to use it for? Like, but okay. like, like, for example, like, oh. egg, egg is a commodity, you know? Ah, yeah, Worldwide, everyone's still eating egg. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's Until right. chicken go extinct, also, we're still going to be eating egg. That's right. Is there? Hey, no, chicken extinct, yeah, no egg. Yeah. No egg yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until chicken go extinct, then that's when we stop egg. <laughs> yeah. So is, are, are, are commodities a very good uh, place to go to for people who want to invest? And, but and aren't commodities, this kind of thing, their prices, they, are, they don't f- they don't tend to fluctuate a lot, right? Depends on, but it also depends on the commodity. Actually, right? commodity fluctuate quite a bit. Yeah, they do. Yeah, oh, they, they do? fluctuate quite a bit. Yeah, I because think so. Because the demand is always there, so it's like, 
Mm, but somehow they fluctuate quite a bit. So like it's I I, w- I wouldn't say for I I say for an average investor or an average normal day to day person, don't think so much about getting into very exclusive kind of investment like right. like like commodities or whatnot. Uh, because number one, if you want to invest it in a manner where you really hold it over long term, I mean, how on earth are you gonna buy ten pound ten tons of? <laughs> Barrel of oil and then put it back. Where are you gonna store yeah. it, right? Yeah, and literally you need to store it, right? You know, commodity. Oh. Unless you're buying paper commodity, right? But most like, of the people always buy paper commodity, right? Because please, man, I cannot imagine mm, keeping yes. barrels of oil. Most people actually buy paper commodity. So when it comes to like um most of this like oil or uh, whatnot, uh, is usually short term speculative kind. Right. You need to. It's a future. You need to buy and sell in time. Uh, gold is one of those that they provide a storage facility for you already, and then you just. Buy paper gold, right? Yeah. They call it that way. Um, it's like an NFT. Yeah, it's like an NFT. Yeah. So, um, but I would say that it's always good in a very traditional manner to look at like having a little bit of gold or silver, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, generally other stuff, it's it's uh, like properties, equities, and so on. Because you want to take a look at the long term because recession always, always pass. Yes, yes. Uh, as, as I hope, like, always pass. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So history has told us that 18 to 36 months, then everything goes away. Well, then if let's say everything is all in the commodity, then by after 36 months, then you get angry again. Like, why did I only invest in this thing? You know, I didn't catch that wave, you know? Right. Yeah. So don't change your plan just simply because you see recession and then you change. Then you're just chasing a trend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so for recessions, right? I remember last time my mom uh, growing up like, when I was a kid. Oh, recession coming. Uh, uh, save up, save up, save up. Mm. For those who have a stable job and who are skillful and have a recession-proof skill set, okay? Is that advice applicable today? Yeah, I think it's it's a... Or should evergreen they, advice. Or evergreen advice. Yeah. <laughs> or should they, or should they, recession, no recession, save. Or should they, <laughs> okay, or should they be putting a little bit of excess money into investments? I think should. Because um, I think today is very different from last time, right? If you look at our parents' days, uh, the interest rate was by 8%, you know? What? Yeah, the FD 8%. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah the, the, the parents very happy and they can tell you like, Whoa. FD earn a lot, you know? Our parents did tell us that because That's in their mind- They uh, put your money in FD, uh, bro, and then think, uh, your money make money. Yeah, hey, you, know, you, know, so in, you know, in India, their FD is 13%, you know? 13%? Yes. Yeah, I was this well, close, right, India to flying now, right? to India <laughs> and then put my money there. there. Yeah, That's right, yeah. So So it's like- because it is so high during their time, they can actually uh, reap a very good benefit coming in today, right? Because the years of accumulating in the early days. Yeah. But for us today, it's going to be harder because the interest rate is so low. So yeah. And the inflation rate is higher than the inf- your, right. your interest rate. Yeah, so you, you have to invest, I would say. If you do not invest, you better pray that your income is very high. Okay. Yeah, that you can actually save enough. If not, then you have to invest. But the sad, unfortunate thing is this. Mm, most Malaysians are not familiar with investment to start off with. Yeah, We are not financially literate. Uh, many people actually don't understand the risk behind it. Um, and, and there's this whole Stigma? twisted, weird mm. ideas. Like for example, right? When you tell someone, hey, you should invest in stocks, they will tell you that it's very, very dangerous. You should lose money. Uh, one. You should lose money. But they can turn their face around. Uh, then later, uh, they talk to a friend. Uh, they invest in money game. Hey, put on my tea, uh, 40 ah, today. Because yeah. I got 16% return from that money game. You know, when you tell, hey, money game, you, know, you lose uh, a little bit of money. Can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you turn more. So the, because of this unrealistic idea of return and, and you base most of your investment on what people tell you rather than what you know. Yeah. Uh, so it becomes very, very dangerous. And... Um, at the end of the day, what I would say is that you think about it, the easiest way of investing, right? Even if you don't want to touch stock market, huh? Yeah. Why not you top up your EPF? Oh. Have you thought about that? Do no, you know you can top up your yeah, EPF yeah, up you to hundred K, right? And every year EPF give you about five to six percent day. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you yeah. oh there's a limit you can put in uh, EPF per year. Per year, la. La, per year. Oh. oh. But hundred K a year, dude, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, and, and, in, and, uh, and EPF, do you know in EPF uh, when you put your money in, right? If your total amount exceed one million, uh, yeah. You can withdraw the, the, the excess ah. one, you know. Oh really? So you let's say your EPF got one million right now, right? Uh-huh. Your one point five ah. Today you can walk into EPF and say, hey, I got one point five. I want to take out my five hundred. Can. Well, you know, I'm a long way from that, but you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would love to just go. Hey, give me my money, man. But the, sure, I I just the you look reason, like you want to go there. <laughs> the reason one I, thing, oh, one point five. Okay, I think the yeah. reason why people are a bit more averse to that is because you know EPF comes with that stigma. Once you put in there, is you know you 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 stuck. You cannot touch until yes. you reach that certain age, lah. And then they're like, okay, all my money is like lock, locked, locked already, locked right. away that's in right. a cage that I cannot even reach into, lah. Mm. That's right. That's yeah. right. Until you're like fifty-five. That's right. Yeah. 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 But but do you know that like many people, right? If you think about it, right? Uh, so I was just doing a talk with VPF the other day, right? So if you're like US and Malaysia, right? Malaysia is actually very lucky because we have VPF. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. As much as you dislike it, right? Number one, when you pay your EPF, uh, whenever he pays your EPF, he gives you extra 13%. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got extra money. That's exactly. number one already, right? You better yeah. you sure you remember that, all <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> you put in more into my VPF than I put my EPF. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and number two, right? If you actually think about it, right? A lot of people will tell you this one thing. If I can take out the money and invest myself, uh, I can mm. get better return. Uh, mm. We have heard this a million one times, yeah, right? Yeah. Let me ask you, uh, how many people will actually have the extra? Extra three thousand ringgit. They really go and invest it first. No, no, right? Yeah. They end up buying some weird stuff. Yeah, or either they go and put into money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They lose yeah. their money. Yeah. So the truth is, right? Those who end up, you will realize, right? That, that at the end of the day, the fellow will get richer when he's sixty. Uh, it's not because he's smarter. It's not because he's better in investing, but he got a discipline. Oh. As simple as that. That's why our parents' generation work very well. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was nothing for them to spend. I mean, God lah, but generally they are much more disciplined. Yeah. Compared to our generation, and our generation can be earning so much more. Yep. Yes, we can say different stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the truth is, we have much more places to spend that money. And Especially so, online, you know. Yeah, you yeah. don't even talk about the return whether higher or not, right? Mm-hmm. It's the idea that can you end up doing it. That's why end of day, right? Females very often save more money than men, because men although got money. But when they look at any kind of opportunity, they dump their money in and they may end up losing their money. But very often, females are much more cautious and what they do is that they just keep the money. They are still thinking whether to invest or not. By the time ah. they think finish, 60-year-old come already, they still got 1 million sitting down there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I'll agree. You know. But would you say EPF is safe? Safe. Capital yeah. guarantee, minimum yeah. 2.5% unless, return a year. Unless something <laughs> really bad happened to the country. The uh, then, then your worry some is... Some end of world, end of world thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. If, if EPF collapse, your, your worry you know, is not you know I think money the, anymore. Yeah. Like, you know I think you the, get out of this country, bro. It's survival yeah. already. The time they had the, the, the KWSP building got fire. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, your EPF money is <laughs> 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 Lucky money is digital yeah. now. Lucky money is digital. Oh, watch all our EPF burn. <laughs> oh man okay uh, here's a question I think like uh, I got my team to all ask this question because young okay. people uh, well, ask this question huh? okay let's see what is the best form of investment for fresh graduates people who have been in the workforce for 5 years and people who have been in the workforce for 10 years okay let's start with 5 years first lah, huh? 5 years uh. Uh. I think when you are 5 years into workforce uh, if you can learn to invest in stocks stocks yes okay. learn to invest in stocks safest, safest stocks to invest in in the long run Dividend. Dividend stocks. Yeah. Dividend stock. What do you mean by dividend stocks? It means you buy the stock, then they'll pay you dividend every year. So yes. So how it works is uh every company when they when they make money, yeah, they can choose to select a particular portion of the profit and give it out to their shareholders as reward. Right. So companies like that generally every year gives you cash flow. Mm. So with that in mind as well, uh if the company is good over long term, the share price will also appreciate. Right, I get yeah. what you mean. So you get two sides of the benefit. Now, uh, but at a younger stage when you are, why five years, I would say, learn to invest in stock. In fact, for the first 10 years, I think learning how to invest in stock is a good thing because stocks generally, the safer bet is long term. Mm. Mm. So you need the time to accumulate. You can't be 50 years old and then say, uh, next 10 years, I'm going to retire. Let me invest in stock uh, so I can accumulate yeah. a portfolio. Uh, yo, I tell you, if last year is your 60 year old, uh, you, you, you cannot, uh, sorry, uh, you lose half of your money. It's like, it's like planting <laughs> yeah. a tree, la, literally planting Correct. a tree. How, like, how, long, does one, how long does uh, one need to be patient for with regards to investing in stocks to see the returns? Minimum. I would say that minimum you should be looking at about five years over a long oh, term. Five years. Yes, yeah, so the more some people would look at like two, three years, that kind, but sometimes you don't really see it. But yes, when it comes to stock, you need the capital because let's say when I first when I first started working, I invested about ten thousand in stock. Right. Mm-hmm. Then um my return was about twenty percent, but there was only two thousand and I didn't feel it, right? Right. So the next thing I did is that I go and buy property and then I invest in property. Mm. Yeah. So the next thing is that 
why I say stop first? Because it sets you out of the comfort zone and it makes you learn a lot of valuable knowledge as a as a young person. I, I mean, like, like for example, Jin, right? Right now you run a business, right? Yeah. Uh, if you have learned all these like ideas of business stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. you, you realize that actually it's the same thing how you evaluate your current business. Yeah. I wish right? I wish I knew what I knew yeah. now when I was yeah. 21 years old. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of like sets you on a path that's earlier okay. that you get to understand how a business runs and I think it doesn't just add value in terms of giving you investment knowledge but because you understand how how business run when you work for a business, especially in if you are in a in a small business or maybe even a big corporation, you are able to understand what ties down to profit or not, right? Which is very impressive to your boss. Mm. Hey, this young chiku uh, understand our uh, profit margin, everything. Mm. Oh. hey, come on uh, you're gonna give the guy yeah. a lot of opportunity, which give you more money to invest again. Yeah. I I love that ninety percent profit margin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But when you say invest in stocks, right? Because I think what a lot of people, especially young people, have in their mind, because I think it's kind of glorified online also. Right? They when they think of investing in stocks, they straight think of trading. You know, like you know, they see very very glamour, very fashion. Ah, oh yeah, are today they I made five grand. After FX, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after FX. Yeah, well, you know those people like, oh yeah, that, yeah I yeah, closed yeah. my trade today. I made five grand today. My total intake for today is like twenty grand. I don't know? believe those people, to be honest. Uh, yeah, la, I, Do you uh, think those people are all for show so that they take in like a uh, learner's guru fee? Financial advisor. I mean, talking about it, right? Like, um, so this, this is what I think. I think most of the people who teaches you investment make more money from your your, cost your fee, than, yeah, than, than their investment, than, than, the, than the returns, uh. Exactly. Yeah, I and I, I mean, I, I'm fortunate enough that along my life, I've met many mentors who genuinely taught me a lot of things and they never collected a single dollar from me. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that coaching is not a good business. Yeah. I'm not saying that, right? I think it's a good thing. I think, yes, when the person is teaching you, the person only make money, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I just can't help but to look at many people in the market today teaching you all these kind of things actually do make more money from their courses than from the investment returns. Yeah. yeah. And you need to think about it this way, right? Yes, they may be very good in it. But in order for them to create the kind of good track record, uh, they need to have a strong income coming in, you know. Yeah. Like, for example, I can tell you that I have a very good eye for a particular stock, right? But if, listen, right now the market is down, in order for me to get the best value, I need to average down, which means I need another bulk of money buying that stock so that I can average my price down. Yeah, because last yeah. month I bought at five bucks, today is two bucks. I bought another bulk at two bucks so that I can make it into Do- 250, dollar right? Yeah. Dollar cost average yeah, it, yeah. right? But for for a normal person who goes to this class, right, and you're earning two, three thousand a month or five thousand or a fixed amount every month, you are not gonna have the extra money for you to yeah. suddenly pump in. You that, don't have the capital. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. So no matter how good the guy is, is because he has a way to make money to start with. Right. Yeah. 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 But but he most has the tools he needs uh, which is in yes. this case cash. You That's know right. he he's playing his his industry his his tr- his craft his skill is playing with cash law. That's right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. he already have got a place to bring cash in. It's just like yeah. EPF or you talk about unit trust or investment funds. Why they, they look like they are so super power? Because think about it. EPF, every month you all contribute so much of money. Mm-hmm. Do they market down? I still got fresh money yeah. coming to buy some more, you know. For a normal investor, you don't have. Therefore, if you want to play the trading game, yep. it's going to be very hard for you. Because yeah, you got yeah. no access to capital. Unless you're like really... It's hundred percent serious, That's right. full on. Yeah. I think it's the same like, when 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 Jin was mentioning just now the camera that costs a car. To a normal person, hey, you sell you buy a camera that costs a car. But in, in our industry, we buy it because this is a money makes us money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Makes this is what makes us yeah. money. You know, this is how we put food on the table. This is the equipment we use to to make yeah. income for this. For yeah, this company. that's right. So choose your investment according to your to to you to yourself, your ability, right? Yeah, so if let's yeah. say you you die die want to do trading, uh, sometimes it's like you drive a MyV to go into an off-road and want to challenge the off-road. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like okay, uh, like good for you. Uh. I don't know, man. I want them to do trading because <laughs> like, you know, I tried it before, but yeah, my heart cannot take it. Uh, Stressful, uh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're like always like checking. It really consumes a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh. If you don't have the time commitment, right? Or like you say, the cash flow yes, yes. to back it up, right? Because you're, you're, so afraid, you're so afraid to lose it. Like I remember last time when I was really young, uh, some guy was teaching me something about forex trading. Uh. 
To be honest, mm, I have mm. no idea. So he went to a course and then he took all the documents and then and passed it all to us, lah. You know, like shared peer-to-peer knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> the dodo are somewhat tiga Abdul, this what that not not, and you know this line that line. I'm like, wow, so cool. Then I saved that money. I I, I converted four hundred ringgit into I think if I'm not mistaken, a hundred and twenty USD. Yeah. Yeah, I lost it in one week. I was so upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I but you see, to traders, right? When they lose money, they are like. Yeah, lo, I mean, there's yeah. part and parcel, yeah, parcel. Yeah, they're not happy, mm. la, but like, you know, this mm. they understand this is the game they're playing, la, you know. I still remember, right? I had to do a paper transfer and then they had to wait for like one week for it to go into my account, right? Then I went into a trade. Wow, I made like $20. I'm like, okay, I sold the trade. <laughs> then after that, I went into another trade, right? Oh my God, it's dropping like uh, $5. I've quickly sell. Then it went up. Oh my God, I'm missing it. I went in. After it dropped somehow, <laughs> like, pop guy. Uh. I no. remember what are uh, USD and JPY. Uh. Yeah. All the all the all the traders if they're listening to this, they're like, ah, oh, amateur <laughs> <laughs> hour. Hey, but even the best guys are uh, their win rate is sixty percent on you know. Yeah, they will never uh, ever show their losses. Yeah. They're always like if they yeah. need to run a business, they always show their wins because yeah. you know, that's, that's how right, it is. Right. Marketing, my friend. <laughs> okay, here's another question from one of our uh, colleagues over here. Is it advisable for you to have multiple bank accounts for your savings? Yeah. If yeah. yes, how do you allocate your finances between the bank accounts? Do you keep one account mainly for investment purposes or do you or do you use one just solely for credit card commitment payments, etc.? Uh, I think I think this one comes down to subjective individual, how you do your money. Right. Yeah. Uh, so for me, too many accounts, too confusing. Yep. But generally I have one account that where every month when my money comes in, I just transfer some there and I just don't look at it. Okay. The savings yeah, are, I just savings don't account. Look at it. Yeah. So then uh, I have one where I use it for all my day to expenses. Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, generally that's about it. Really, that's for me. So oh. I only have two. Then the rest is all the investment accounts and whatnot, lah. Right? right? Yeah, and my wife is one of my account, lah. Where I give her money and then forget give her money. The return, the return is unknown. Return is unknown. The one. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. The return on investment is her smile. Oh, happiness, happiness. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's yeah. very, very true. It's quality of yeah. life, that one. Yeah. Happy wife, happy <laughs> life. <laughs> My so wife listens to the podcast, <laughs> uh, so I have to say that. Okay? <laughs> How many percent of your income do you allocate for your savings? How many percent would you use for investments? I would say minimum 20% into saving. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay, so this is one, one thing that I want to share, right? Is that even if you owe credit card money uh, right now, uh, you need to have some sort of savings. Okay. Don't think that like because you owe credit card money and then you need to get out of it. So every month you're going to take every single dollar, pump it on into clearing your credit card debt. Don't ever do that. Really? At least create two, three thousand ringgit in savings. Oh. But I thought like if you don't pay off your credit card debt, they will charge you interest. Okay, so because what happens is this very often people do that generally at the end of the month they get into certain troubles yep. and they swipe their credit card again. Yeah. Oh. So when you pay off your credit card that month, let's say you pay off two thousand right, and then something happens, you swipe off your card again. You feel very demotivated. Already. Yeah. Because yeah. you look at the balance go up again, they're like, Ugh. so end of the day it becomes a cycle. So it's best that you you keep that two, three thousand there, and then after that you um you only you start channeling your money into uh, paying off your credit card debts. Uh, usually, it works better psychologically because number one, you look at the two three thousand, you want to protect the two three thousand. Right. Yeah. But isn't that also on the other hand, right? If you just keep paying the minimum, 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 then your bill just gets racked up way yes. too high. So yes. there's a bit of a balancing act there also, la. Like, yes, maybe you don't clear your credit card bill all the way, but you do have to clear it like somewhat so you know the the, the mm. water don't overfill the bucket uh. that that's why that's why in those situations when you are in a credit card debt you shouldn't be looking at six months saving mm. you just look at about two two k that that should suffice if you want to save six months or more forget it lah you're <laughs> 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 yeah, you're gonna owe even way more on credit yeah. card you know so you should be saving about two three thousand just for emergency right and then remaining should be focusing on clearing off the debt already wow yeah. okay okay so what you're saying is like Let's say, for example, uh, my credit card uh, for debt for this month is 2,500 ringgit. Mm. Okay? In my bank account, I have maybe 3,000 ringgit. Mm. So I can clear, maybe I'll clear 1,000 ringgit and then I keep 2,000 in my bank. Yes. Is that, that's what you're saying. Yes. So just bring it down. Clear however much you are able to, but still have enough in the bank. So I, that's don't, right. I don't clear. Even though if I clear, if I 3,000 in my bank, I, I need to clear 2,005, I'll still have 500. That's, that's not... That's not the greatest thing to do in the world. Yeah, uh. yeah. So like yeah. next month, maybe you end up, this month you ate a little bit too much of KFC or like Taco Bell. <laughs> then you end up having about 2,008, uh, I mean like 1,008 in your account. Then maybe you want to top up the 200, then you channel. 
So like that, it's um so far because because money is more psychological than numbers one. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So you you want to play with that gamification factor, that psychological factor, mm. to make you feel good when you're clearing those debts. Uh. Savings is all about psychological discipline. Yeah, it's a lot more. If not, if it's not psychological, honestly, there'll be a lot of rich people. Oh yeah, I would have yeah, been yeah. richer than <laughs> than current. Also. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you think about cryptocurrency in twenty twenty three? so here is where the interesting debate is, huh? uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Have to show one. It's like confirm in here, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just uh, for the record, my pop my portfolio for crypto is eighty percent down, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, so for the record, huh? Eighty percent down. Mine's um, current. Mine is. Mm, <laughs> mine, mine is currently. Probably about twenty percent now because I I, I exited. Oh, yeah. bagus lah, bagus lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I did not exit. I just left it there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, mine's about eighty percent down. Uh, but anyway, it comes down to the idea of do you believe in the technology to start with? So for me, I did not really invest in the more risky, risky crypto. Yep. Uh, I think that it's gonna be a purge in the whole crypto market for the next one year as well. Yeah, dude, um, it's already happening. Yeah, it's already purging Freaking like crazy, so right? many. Wait, when you say purge means like, oh, remember you told, told me about all those meme coins and everything? They just no, not that. Like all the, the companies that was really, it looks really great. Like there's this one company called Celsius. They say, be your own bank. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We like, even got interviewed yeah. that guy, right? Are you in, oh, Yeah, I interviewed the CEO and after that I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Let me, just a, a little bit of backstory. So they created this app that allows you to be your own bank and your, your asset is Bitcoin. So they will take your Bitcoin as collateral and give you a loan, all right? So it's like, and the thing is you, but the thing is you loan out your Bitcoin, but you get back the interest directly to you. They take a cut, but you get the bigger cut of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They went bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. So everyone who deposited their cryptocurrency in there cannot, draw, cannot withdraw. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The next one, FTX. FTX, oh, that's yeah. the big one, uh, FTX. Popular. F- FTX, F- FTX. <laughs> yeah, I agree. yeah, it sounds about right. FTX, because yeah. yeah. it was a shit show, dude. <laughs> that one is damn sad, that one. No, damn sad, no, damn sad. Really that that one, sad. it was a domino effect. A lot of like BlockFi, Almeida, whatever, mm. not, all went bankrupt because they invested in FTX. Yeah. But what, what caused them to suddenly like just crash like that? Uh, CZ, <laughs> uh, the owner of, okay, the co-founder of Binance bought a very big chunk of uh, FTX tokens, right? Uh. He sold everything, <laughs> and then uh, after that he sold, and then another person sold. It's a domino yeah. effect. Okay, okay. So what what happened was FTX was that because in in a in an exchange you will keep your clients money, mama, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. you put money, your money is with me, right? So supposing you're supposed to keep that and don't touch it, but what he did is that he actually invested it, and he's actually losing money. Yeah. So as long as no one is finding out. It's okay because yeah. the money is there. One. It's, it's paper just, money. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's paper money, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. but Czech found out, heard reports that like. Oh, something fishy, and then because they are they are their enemies. Yeah. So what he did is that he just threw out a Twitter saying that due to some recent report, we decided to sell all his tokens. Yeah. Then everyone just went, whoa. So when you say sell, <laughs> you say sell is he sells? It's not like he sells it to uh, his share or anything. Is basically he put the say FTX a, hey, uh, here's our token, give me back all my money lah. Basically, yeah, he cashed yeah. out, like, He cashed okay, out. Imagine, he cashed imagine, out. He cashed imagine out, this. Out. Imagine this. There are a thousand Yeezys. I bought ninety. I bought nine. I bought eighty of them. You. Then the rest twenty is in whoever, lah. Okay. And I realized that hey, this Yeezy is like damn bad quality. Yeah. But, but the price is so high because like I own majority yeah. of it. But yeah. That that I sold, sold everything. Oh yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. I will. And I will tweet out. Say, hey, you know what? I found a flaw in this Yeezy. I saw. I saw the 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 FTX the owner. He actually go and like message the guys. Like, hey, dude, please don't don't do this or something. There's like a lot that. of things. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of conspiracies where this guy funded over a billion dollars in the US uh, 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 elections. Election, yeah. Wow. That's why the that's why and also uh, that's why apparently the media right now is still painting him like a very good person. Mm. And not uh, pressing charges on him because Joe Biden was funded some by that, him. That, something yeah. like, that, like that. Something like that. A lot of conspiracy come out. Yeah. But I guess moving ahead next year, um, you what what you'll be looking at is, do you believe in the technology? Or? So I think those companies that hold the technology that's good, generally over a long term, you are looking at a growth stock kind of thing. Yeah. But if you are looking at those more higher risk kind of crypto, then you want to be very careful because. Yeah, those are there's no fundamental support. It's kinda like it's kinda like a mama store coming out and tell you that, hey guys, I got this mama store, right? And this mama store is the best mama store in Malaysia, but then there's no one going in when yeah. you observe yeah, yeah. for the next ten days, right? Yeah. Yeah. So versus like the other guy that's not shouting, but every day you see a lot of people going in. 
right? So if you want to see what kind of thing are you invested in, don't buy dot yeah. coin lah. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't buy, don't buy, <laughs> don't 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 buy a coin that is many that that's easily pumped up by Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> so one of my favorite coin that I've been accumulating is called a chain link. Oh really? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So chain link because what they do is that they are they are oracles. So they provide oh. real life information to the chain and they're the largest chain. They're partnering with Google and everything else, right? Yep. So uh, the technology itself is useful. So what happens is that in order, ex- so how it works is that uh, for those who do not know uh, for the benefit is that uh, in order to access the chain, you need to pay the gas fee and you need to buy their token to pay the gas fee. So that's where you buy chain token. So the idea is that I always think cryptocurrency at the end of the day is kind of like building a country's currency. Mm. Today you go to a country, you 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 find this particular island, uh, and anyone declares as Ryan Land, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm the king there. And then you're gonna print out your own currency called uh, Ryan Token, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, then the next thing is that you are start selling this token, ma. Then you go to Jin. Then Jin is gonna be like, "Oh, great! Uh, congratulations, man. Um, so you buy my token, uh, and Then it's like, what am I gonna do there, man? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, actually, I got nothing on my island. Uh. <laughs> He's not gonna buy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you tell him that, oh, actually, uh, Elon Musk uh, is gonna set up the, the the Tesla factory here, and then Maybank also come in already. Who come in already? And then, uh, hey, you know what? Let me give you. When you buy one hundred thousand of these token, I give you one house there, lah. And then a uh, nearby got Mama store. Uh, then he will want to buy the token to go there and spend. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same concept. So if you see a, a, a cryptocurrency being able to create all this fundamental need, yep. then it's safer. There's but a demand. There's yes. a there's a demand for it. Like a, no, not demand, but like there's an actual real use yes, case. Yes, there's an actual real use case, like Ethereum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Ethereum, yeah. yeah. So people need to buy Ethereum token in order to run their projects. That's why Ethereum moves. That's yeah. that's the whole point. I'm I'm I I I'm, in, I'm invested in Ethereum. Yeah, and and Bitcoin a bit lah, but I'm waiting for a crash. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not infa- not financial advice lah. Okay, I don't know. Okay, everybody keeps saying that it's gonna go down lower, so you know we wait lah. Yeah, also waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is not, it's not not financial advice. I don't go. I go buy Chainlink just because you heard Mr. Money uh, yeah, say so. Yeah, yeah, uh. It's not financial advice. Please don't buy Chainlink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the best resource? Uh, what are the best sources for generating passive income in Malaysia? I think business man is still oh, the business, best. Uh. Yeah, I think, I I, I think a lot of people have this idea that you can invest and make a lot of passive income, right? But, I I think it's true if you already got a lot of money. Yeah. 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 But if you got no money. <laughs> you can't make money with investing. Because investing means money make money. You got no money, how no? You, you, you need the volume to yeah, see that twenty yeah. percent return. That's oh, right. that's a no, lot. For yeah. example, I think you take like FD la, For yeah. if you have a million ringgit yeah. and your FD is paying out three yep. percent, you put it in. You put it in the in the FD. Then every month, every year, you just take out your the returns la. Yeah. So every year, what's what's three percent of one million? Thirty grand. Thirty grand. So you make thirty grand, oh? You make thirty Hello? grand a year, oh? If you live frugally. You can kind of mm. live off the money, lah. But you need a million to start in the first yeah, place, You, need a million, man. you, you can't put like ten grand yeah. and then take out three hundred, three hundred ringgit. Yeah, how no, man? You you need like you need like be quite solid in terms of income to have uh, one million, right? Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, to be honest, right, if you start your own business, it's the biggest, the biggest return. It could be ten x, two x, three x, whatever yeah. x. If you do it right, lah. Not, but the thing is, it's easier than that. It's not passive, lah. I mean, if no, you start a business, it's active, lah. You know. You you have to go and, and and put your effort in there. You have to run the business. You it have becomes to make the money. it becomes passive once you have a structure and you've t- yeah. you've imparted your knowledge all to the the staff and then they run for it. That's, then mm. it becomes passive. Then but then again, it's the same thing like investing. You it's your your one million ringgit now. It's not the value is still one million ringgit, but it's one million ringgit of your time, your the years, the money you put into the business. Yeah, there, there's a lot you of. Uh, I think when it comes to business investment, it's not just money, but a lot of effort. Right? Yeah. 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 A lot of assets are. Uh, remember, in a business, assets doesn't only mean monetary value. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's exactly. Right. So time, time is money. Yeah, yeah. time is money. But it compounds know? the best, man. It compounds yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. So there's no there's no shortcut way lah to get passive income lah. No lah. No, I think there's no shortcut. Way. Not everyone will be doing it. Ninety percent really. of the people who tell you I can teach you how to do passive income and retire while you're thirty are all lying because you know why you have to pay five thousand first to know the answer. <laughs> Yeah. And, then, and then they will say like, oh, you don't have a million ringgit in your bank account. Uh. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, uh, it doesn't work. After man. that class, he retired. Yeah. <laughs> That's why then the people who attend, they all start their own class also. Right. Okay, what do you think of the Malaysian economy uh, now that we have a new prime minister? Uh, moving into economy, economy, economy. Yeah. First thing what, what, do you think, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think, firstly, 
based on like what we can hear, what uh, our new prime minister is trying to do, they are really trying to build up the economy. And based on his track record as well, he has been a pretty good uh, finance minister in the past, right? But how relevant with the knowledge based on today, we really, really do not know, right? Yeah. Uh, but based on market response, you can see people are much more confident. Yeah. Uh, I personally think that the moving ahead, you, you know, when, when they were all like, Wondering like who's gonna be a PM and everything, yeah, right? So yeah. there's one thing that I was telling my staff as well. I was saying that like, you know what? If they were to work together as a team, right, BN and uh, Pakatan, you have to let bygones be bygones. Yeah. There's no point of going on a witch hunt anymore and saying yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is the guy they want to put him in jail and everything. Fine, like, no. Think about it this way, right? Think about it this way. If okay, this is controversial a bit, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Controversial a bit. Yes, maybe person A has has makan sakau a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. You put him in jail, is he going to give you back money? No. He's not wow. going to give you back money, right? Yeah. yeah. Then, but if let's say the alternative is you make good use of that person and sh- set on rules so that the money doesn't kind of suck out anymore in the future. You, you yeah. stop the bleeding. Yeah. You, yeah, I you, think, you can't take the blood that's been lost. Yeah, but you stop I think the that's bleeding the la. best picture you can get out of an ugly picture already. Yeah, mm. yeah. Be- because there's no perfect picture that you can come to. Then you just have to accept that Hopefully, it's going to be like that. And look at the economy-wise, um, I my 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 thoughts about where is it going to hit to has kind of went off because previously, we were only looking at one manifesto, right? Yeah. yeah. That was a combination of manifesto. You know? Oh, like, yeah. Like, oh, ah, what okay, are you going to okay. do then? Like, last I mean. time, I, I can look I at your manifesto and I can say, I got, I got this, what's going to happen? Now yeah. it's like, uh, which one do you want to do? Which one do you want to yeah, do? Yeah, because right. there's because it's a unity. Parties. It's a unity. Right. Yeah. So so then uh, definitely we do not know but what we can see is that they are much more investor confidence. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So we are, what we can see is also um, with a stronger check and balance within this unity government, hopefully as what they say, there will be tenders, open tenders. There won't be any more, you know, like all the... Back doors and yeah, uh, under table door, kind of thing. Table, okay, I call it bro deals. Yeah. Bro deals. Yeah, bro deals. Yeah, bro deals. Yeah. Yeah, bro, so if bro. it works out well like that, then naturally it's going to turn into a much more meritocratic environment and it's going to encourage uh, good businesses to survive and do well. I see. Yeah, so hopefully... Uh, yeah, well, Zahid is already speaking Mandarin. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see, did you see that <laughs> video? What's the Malaysia run? What's the Malaysia run? What was the Malaysia run? It is so funny, just two weeks ago, everyone was bashing him. Yeah. He is the savior of the nation. Yeah, so the, the, whole, the whole country is like upside down. Freaking so don't know what's hilarious happening. when yeah. I saw that. I was laughing. I was laughing on the way to work. I was like, what the heck? What's he, what's he actually saying, man? <laughs> do, you, do you think? Go away, go away. And then suddenly, please recover. Please, please recover. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think it's possible for for Malaysia um, to one day over what's the word for it overtake Singapore as a as an economic hub? Mm. Hard, very hard. hard. It's gonna take very long term because generations. Yeah, and and to think about it, Singapore has already such a good structure in place, right? It's only gonna continuously improve. Yeah. yeah. In order for us to catch up, we need to improve, and means. Just by numbers and mathematics alone, you need to improve double of their level only you can end up catching up in maybe one generation. Because it's not like they're stag- stagnant. Yeah. We're not trying to get to the level. That's right. We, we have to double our speed to even match them la, at, their, right. at their current pace as well. That's right. Bro, That's in right. three years, I haven't gone to Singapore. So I went there, everything is cashless really, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, then then my, my follow-up question is, do you think like like Vietnam and Cambodia, they're going to catch up to Malaysia? Yeah, they already I, are. I, I, I yeah. like Indonesia, <laughs> Indonesia is growing massively, right? Well, Indonesia they, is a powerhouse. Yeah. yeah. You know, in, Indonesia inflation rate is very low. Really? Yeah, it's very low. They kept it under control. Their 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 national debt level is very low as well. Wow. Yeah, but it's not really a good thing. It's not really a bad thing as well. Uh, not really a good thing in the sense of uh, they are not growing ex- um, aggressively, but not a bad thing in terms of um, they they are not stable. Too, uh. Yeah, they're pretty stable in that sense. Uh, I think I think Thailand is uh, is a formidable nation in my opinion. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. uh, percent. Vietnam as well is a very formidable nation at this point. Uh, Philippines is too fragmented, so they have a huge problem in infrastructure, which is the same problem as uh, Indonesia at this current time. Right. Yeah, still. Uh, Malaysia, I think we are still very, very good because if you look at it, right, last year we actually, or this year we actually had a lot of FDI, yeah, foreign foreign uh, direct investment. If you think about it, why it happens, right, is because all this while 
you go to Singapore and set up a HQ, and then you will actually set up your manufacturing arm in Malaysia, Malaysia. right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then we have a lot of tech manufacturing arm in Malaysia. So we actually Malaysia is kind of like a mini Silicon Valley, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I do believe that. Because we see in in Penang, you mm. know. Yes, that's yeah, right. Penang is literally becoming like Silicon Valley. All that's right. We are we are known as the Silicon Valley of the East, literally. But yeah. what we produce is low end, uh, low end uh, manufacturing. Like for example, Dyson, right? Yeah. Like previously, you know that that mold of the Dyson plastic uh, is actually produced here. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's produced here, but we don't do the design here. Okay. But when it comes to home manufacturing chain, right? It's the same uh, where where design is the higher level of things, right? Same thing in marketing. The creative guys are the the upper, and then if you're just holding a camera, you know, you're you're considered lower end of the production spectrum, right? So the same thing here. And Malaysia has been doing a lot of this low end, but what happened was when China and Taiwan had this whole tension in relationship, yeah. US China had this whole tension. Malaysia suddenly became very attractive, eh? uh. because now, ah. Uh, I need to move my tech away from China. I need to move my tech away from Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. So when I look at these two places, right, I want to come into a Southeast Asian country. Where is the best place with the best facilities right now? Malaysia. Or Singapore. Why, why Malaysia over Thailand? Singapore, I, I guess you can say because no land. No land. No land. <laughs> Singapore for me, no land. They want to open factories like <laughs> where's, where's Sorry. the space, bro? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Singapore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but why why like Malaysia over Thailand or Malaysia over Indonesia? Because we already have existing infrastructure for tech uh, manufacturing. Mm. Yeah, so when you have that existing infrastructure means you have the general workforce, you have the general uh, whatever skill set. public skill set <coughs> and then public infrastructure available and stuff like that. So it makes it easy. So actually, right, the truth is uh, last year, don't quote me, uh, but... Even if Malaysia don't work very hard, right? Mm. You're still gonna get all these FDI. Mm. You don't have to put it this way, right? You gotta screw up that bad in only people won't come lah. <laughs> uh, I'll put it this way lah. Okay. So we we are in this super unique position. Position, you know, honestly, you are in such a great unique position that like as long as you're fine, you are working as a normal, you don't need to be superior, people will come and set up their things here. Right. It's just how is it gonna be? Yeah. I hope uh, Rafizi Ramli is listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> and also Tanku Zafro, he's the international trade minister. No, no, he's not. He's Miti. Who's the international trade minister? Uh? Him lah, him lah. Zafro lah. Oh, Zafro, right. Zafro oh. lah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I hope he's listening. Yeah. So, you know. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Very interesting. Yeah, on the road to one USD equals two ringgit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, Peter. Yeah, maybe when Kezo graduate her uh, college, then you can see lah. Uh, one ringgit equals two USD. I'll be very but happy if that happens, man. Yeah, 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 that'll be cool. That'll be cool. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Money TV, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us here. Always awesome to having a conversation with you about money. Uh, you know, you have made our minds richer, Chewa. <laughs> now, for those listening, go make your your, your pockets, your bank account richer. <laughs> Uh, check out Mr. Money TV. He does a lot of uh, uh, a lot of videos uh, educating you. He also runs a lot of courses that you can actually sign up for yeah. and learn all about investments. And I think like uh, I, I had a chat with him on the side. I was like, hey man, I kind of want to bring him in to talk to our employees over here about investing. <laughs> ah, so that you guys don't blame me if I cut your bonuses. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, I'm scared to come in. Eh? Time, times are bad, lah. Times are bad, lah. You know, <laughs> I need alternative. <laughs> yeah. So before we go, Peter, you want to say anything to those listening? Uh, I think the only thing is learn about money. Money is actually not that complicated. It's not that scary. You just need to have a little bit more open mind. Um, yes, it is just foreign to you because our school doesn't teach us that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but when you when you actually spend some time to learn about it, you will realize that a lot of these concepts are actually taught to you in school already. It's just not taught in that Properly, manner. Yeah. 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 So. Awesome. Yeah, don't be afraid about it. Explore it because if you don't master your money, money is gonna master you, man. So yeah, yeah. all right, man. What a quote, yeah. Mr. Money TV. Thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll Thank speak you. to you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>